Hi and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. In this short episode, I will show you how to calculate the number of moles of ATP per gram of fatty acid. Now, using stearic acid as our example, all you need is the following formula. The total yield of ATP from beta oxidation divided by the molar mass of the fatty acid. Now, you can calculate the ATP yield from beta oxidation by using the quick and simple formula 7 times C minus 6, where C is the number of carbons. This formula assumes an ATP equivalence of 2.5 ATPs per NADH and 1.5 ATPs per FADH2. Using this formula, which only works for saturated even-numbered fatty acids, gives 120 moles of ATP per mole of stearic acid. Now, stearic acid has a molar mass of 284.48 grams. If you do not know how to calculate the molar mass of a compound, then I suggest that you look up my video titled Molar Mass Formula Mass Calculations. A link is placed within the top right hand corner for your convenience. Okay, so if we now divide our 120 ATPs by the molar mass of stearic acid, which is 284.48, this gives us 0.42 moles of ATP per gram of stearic acid. Here is a table that gives a summary of the number of moles of ATP per gram of different saturated fatty acids. Now, if we graph these values, it is clear to see that there is a steady rise in energy density in terms of moles of ATP per gram of fatty acid with an increase in fatty acid chain length. In summary, longer chain fatty acids such as stearic acid possess a higher energy density per gram than shorter chain fatty acids. In fact, if we were to compare the percentage increase in energy density per gram for each of these fatty acids against caproic acid, it quickly becomes clear the significance of carbon chain length, with stearic acid having 36% more energy in terms of ATPs per gram than caproic acid. So in summary, the longer the carbon chain, the greater the energy density in terms of moles of ATP per gram of fatty acid. Now, in my next series of episodes, I will be focusing on how fat is created and stored within the body. More specifically, how excess carbohydrates can be converted into fatty acids and stored as triacylglycerols, also known as TAGs. As part of this series, I will be covering the metabolic processes, hormones and pathways that are critical for supporting and triggering the process known as lipogenesis. So please subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified when these episodes are released. Finally, if you found this to be useful, please click like. Thank you for listening.